My next guest is seeing the flow of migrants firsthand. He calls the situation a slap in the face, and he's pleading with Washington for help. Bruno Lozano is the Democratic mayor of Del Rio, Texas, and he joins me now. Mayor, welcome. Uh, uh, describe to us what you are now seeing on a daily basis. Uh, you're situated right there on the border. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. So for over the last seven days, the, now, the number of average detainees is now 700 individuals in, uh, that are detained. This morning, I did speak with Chief Skurro of the Border Patrol Sector for Del Rio, and he advised me that this morning there was just under 1,000 individuals detained, and of those, about 256 of them were unaccompanied children. So it's definitely getting backlogged in the Del Rio sector, for sure. I know that uh, Texas, of course, had uh, those historically devastating storms, those winter storms. And, and because right. of that, you actually made a video. You had the foresight to make a video. You sent it to the White House. And apparently you said, we don't have the resources for what you anticipated would happen. What was the response from the White House? Well, I did speak with Julie Rodriguez of the White House, and um, they, they stated that they were trying to facilitate the needs and trying to come up with a plan of action. but. This is nothing new. We were managing it in 2019, and here, here we are, 2021, managing another immigration crisis of, of great proportion, and nothing's been done. You know, and it is a Biden border crisis, in my in my opinion, because there's no plan of action. And seeing what we're seeing now with, with what's happening in the Rio Grande Valley, with with people wrapped around in, in blankets made out of silver, I mean, it's just it's just kind of absurd what's happening. Why do, why do you say the way the administration has handled this, you personally feel it's a slap in the face? Well, because when you're pleading with, with the president to, to stop the release of migrants into your community while we're dealing with a weather phenomenon that hasn't happened in 20 to 30 years, and we only get three or four days of that time, you know, per the Border Patrol sector, which, by the way, we have a great relationship down on the ground with our, with our chief, with our chief and, and non-government organizations. It's just really like, you know, whose side are you on? The American people were without water, electricity for days on end in Del Rio, Texas, and you're going to release migrants, you know, th those individuals that are seeking a better life and opportunity into this, into this weather phenomenon. I just don't understand how that's, I don't even understand how that could even happen. Now, there are obviously other issues as well. Uh, according to uh, Border Patrol's uh, website, U.S. Border Patrol criminal alien encounters for this fiscal year at 4,140, uh, la all of fiscal 2020 was just 2,400. That's an enormous surge. How does a small right. town like yours handle something like that? Well, I can tell that the people of Del Rio are beginning to get really nervous and, and scared. Um, I know that today I had a small a small business owner. She does photography for the community, and she was giving me firsthand experience of migrants asking her for food and shelter, and she was worried that they were going to steal her equipment because we don't know how destitute and desperate these individuals are. There's a humanitarian side of things that, that's being left out. You know, you had the one side where the Border Patrol is being scapegoated for inhumane care, yet on the other side you have a mother, a Guatemalan mother, just yesterday, who swam across the Rio Grande with her nine-year-old daughter and three-month-old son. Uh, the Border Patrol responded to that, trying to rescue and revive the mother and, and son, which they, they succeeded, but unfortunately were unable to revive the, the, the daughter. So which is more inhumane, the wow. mother crossing with her two children or the Border Patrol trying to revive them? That's a question for, for, yeah. for the administration, you know? Yeah, I, you know, well, you know, I hear the administration, I've heard Nancy Pelosi use the word humanitarian several times, uh, and yet right. uh, the images that have leaked out are just devastating, heartbreaking. We've got some on the screen now, but people are wondering what we're not seeing. We're, what we're not seeing, since there's been a press blackout of all of this, what right. would you like to see the White House do from here, Mayor? Uh, because it feels, again, we're getting conflicting reports on what they're doing, what they're trying to achieve. What would you like to see? I'd like for them to, first of all, recognize that this is a humanitarian crisis. You know, this, this behavior is unlawful behavior, no matter how you want to call it. If the, if the people are trying to cross and give them a better life, you know, entering the United States, they're being set up unsuccessfully, for one thing, because they're going to be going into our communities hidden behind, behind closed doors, you know, being paid under the table, what have you, or sex slavery. You know, and then another side of things, you know, you're condoning the organized criminal activity in Mexico because that, how do you think these individuals are able to traverse Mexico? It's not through Google Maps or Apple Maps, I can tell you that much. They're, they're, they're speaking right. and talking to organized criminals that, that, that get them here. And that's condoning that unlawful behavior on both sides of the border. We need a Mayor, plan. Uh, we wish you luck. Yeah, we do need a plan for sure. And, and the country is recognizing that. Of course, you see it firsthand. And that's why we appreciate Absolutely. your time. Thank you very much.
Thank you for having me. Uh, President so Biden.